Heidi slash Ian does it all. Um, today I'm going to be unfortunately frogging a project that I was working on, a pride project, of course, it's pride. Um, so I have a couple updates for you guys. Um, let me get the chat going. There we go. Um, so, um, first of all, I completed my cat sweater, um, and, uh, I had measured around my cat's neck and got 30 stitches on a J hook and, uh, my cat, his whole body, my cat's not slim, by the way. My cat's whole body slipped through this neck hole. Um, so that was pretty disappointing because I worked really hard on this. I love it. The colors are so cute, but apparently it just takes a bigger cat. So um, when I was making this, um, someone, I feel like it was uh, Nixie Pixie. If I, it, it wasn't, and I'm crediting the wrong person. I do apologize, but someone mentioned that um, that uh, Bagaday's cat is part Maine Coon, and uh, Maine Coon cats tend to be very large, um, just in general, like they're just bigger cats. And um, so, I initially went on the pattern that. Um, that bag of day provided and hey nixie it was you okay good okay i thought so um um hold on a second hey dad can you um come back later what can you come back later yeah here you go there, here's the stuff at the top of the stairs okay thank you <laughs> i'm an adult man that lives with his parents okay um, so initially this was the, the width of the, um, I don't have my tape measure here, but you can see, Hey, um, Hey Daniel. Uh, so initially this is how big the neck was going to be on the, um, project. This is 40 stitches with the J hook and a worsted weight. You can see how much larger that is. Um, and this is 30 stitches. But now I'm like, what do I even do? And I'm, you know, running out of my silver yarn. So I don't want to waste it and then have yet another cat sweater that doesn't fit. So I'm making, I'm going to make a cat sweater, not today, um, but I'm going to make it out of this uh, beautiful mandala yarn. Uh, the colorway is a uh, swirl. Really? Is that really the name? That's stupid. Okay, sorry. Um, so, uh, but it is rainbow. Uh, it's got all the colors of the rainbow. Um, and I am going to make a sweater for my cat. I'm going to take measurements. I'm going to, um, so the sweater pattern that I found um, doesn't go through the arms at all. So it, it only fits around the belly and fits around the neck. And so with that, I'm going to be really, so um, with that, the the chest and the arms are open. So I don't think my cat will be able to escape as easy because what he does is he pulls in his little arms and he uses the fabric to scoot out. <laughs> I know I'm like <laughs> motioning how, um, how to do it, but he like scoots out of the neck uh like that so i think that that will be the way the only problem that i foresee with that is that um so this is mandala thick and quick um it says it's a six um it's really like a thick five um it's really beautiful but it only has 87 yards so i'm a little afraid that i might end up playing yarn chicken um with uh you know, I don't like having a limited supply of yarn. I like having an unlimited supply of yarn, uh, which is why I look like a hoarder. Um, <laughs> so now that I've talked about um, my cat plenty, um, Jelly, Jelly, you want your necklace? 
doesn't this look like, I mean, you guys probably can't see the sparkle as well as I can, but like, doesn't that just look like little diamonds? I don't know. I think it's like a little diamond necklace. I think it looks so cool. Um, so I'm gonna drink some coffee. How are you guys? Please tell me how you are. I um, am very excited to have you guys on uh, this morning, this afternoon, whatever time it is for you. I'm happy that you're here. Um, it's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Um, unless you're talking about the yarn, in which case I did nothing to, to, to make you beautiful. I just bought it. And I bought it at full price. Like, that's some pretty yarn if you buy it at full price. So, what I'm doing right now is I'm making, um, bag of days. Of course, like, pretty much all my patterns are bag of day. Um, also, I'm wearing a rainbow, um, Try Guys shirt. They have little triceratops on them. Um, wearing my pride, um, shirt. So I started making the Japanese knot bag that bag a day recently, um, uh, recently released and, um, it started to look good. Uh, so she used a four weight yarn and she used a J hook and I decided to use a J hook because I just ordered a furls J hook. And I was really excited to use it. Um, and I use the J hook the most. So I knew it was gonna be a bit big for the pad for the yarn that I'm using because I am using Rainbow by Ice Yarn. And um, this is a three weight yarn. You can really see, I'll do the, the bag a day. Um, you really see that it's a three weight through and through. So it's a beautiful yarn, but the J hook was just beautiful. I'm uh, sorry, the J hook, I just read the comments. The J hook was just too big. So I started making um, the bag and I started noticing, so the purple row that you see right here is supposed to have the bumps and some of them are defined and some of them got stretched due to the fact that the stitch wasn't tight enough. Um, so I'm losing yarn definition, um, and stitch definition by using a larger hook. So I'm going to frog, hopefully this frogs easily, <laughs> something about feeling this yarn, um, bleached my hair a week ago and I finally got around to coloring it. It's rainbow. I have the colors are set, setting right now and I'm working on an interlocking mosaic project. Oh my gosh, that sounds like a good old time. That sounds so fun. Um, so, oh, thank you for sharing that. Oh my gosh, I can't, I hope I get to see it. Um, how did you do rainbow all over? Did you do part rainbow? Um, I've been thinking about doing rainbow hair, but I, um, I'm not quite sure about it because like some colors don't hold in the hair as well. And I know my Cosmo prof that I go to, they're always out of orange dye. Um, which makes me angry because I'm trying to maintain my orange and keep it from fading. Um, but they're always out of orange, uh, semi-permanent dye. Um, so I'm going to use my furls, uh, pride hook that I got last year. And I'm going to use, I only have a G plus. Um, and so that's a 4.5 millimeter, um, for a uh, comparison, a J hook is a six millimeter. So I'm going to be downsizing quite a bit. Um, but email you a picture. I took different colors and just did different small sections. Ooh, I bet that is so pretty. Oh my gosh. I can't wait to see. Um, so I, um, I bet that is so beautiful. So I'm going to start frogging this. Um, I think the colors are, are quite beautiful and I think that they will, um, Manic Panic has some beautiful oranges. I know how well it sets later. Nice. I, you know, I have bad luck with Manic Panic for some reason. Um, I use, um, Joico. I tend to use Joico because the color lasts the longest for me. Um, I don't know if they sell it at like Sally's. Um, I do know that they sell it at Cosmoprof. Um, oh, this frogs pretty easily. Famous last words, right? 
So I'm trying to not only unravel it, but unravel it in a way that I can reuse it. Um, this yarn is quite beautiful, but I'm not used to working with um, size three yarn. And so it's weird. It's just weird. Um, have you tried Arctic Fox? I got it read from them. I've heard great things about them. Um, so the thing about me is that I'm poor and uh, I also have my esthetician's license, which means that I can go to Cosmoprof. And um, Cosmoprof has retail price, sorry, um, uh, has, uh, not retail, wholesale, more wholesale pricing. Um, so it's more affordable for me. So I haven't really gone into a Sally's in years, um, but I need to try it because I've heard such good things. And there was this one girl on YouTube, I haven't seen her make a video in a long time, but she used to dye her hair with Arctic Fox all the time. And it was just gorgeous. I loved it. Um, but I'm thinking about going like an unnatural color because um, I've been um, this orange for a while and I want to try something new. Um, but I really like this orange. It's such a pretty orange. Uh, the only thing is about a natural color is that it's hard to keep up with my roots um, or my rootage. Uh, and um, my roots are really dark. So it's like, if I pulled it back, like you can see, <laughs> it's not as uh, glamorous under there, but that's okay. Um, so I'm thinking about keeping my chains because it could just be that I had like loose chains and um, cause I don't wanna redo that whole chain process. <laughs> I'm really lazy. Trying to find like the easiest way out. Now, if you're wondering why, Ian, do you have a G plus? And what the fuck is a G plus? I have a G plus because it was the only, the only one left <laughs> that I would actually use and this is when I was doing a lot of amigurumi so um naturally brunette I do have a good bit of white coming in now oh that's good at least you have some white you know that's uh that's the best canvas for some color um although it is more porous so it tends to lose color faster um but yes yeah, so g plus was the only um was the only hook that they had left in the pride swirl so um that i would actually use i think they probably had like a p or something like that but um i'm not gonna use that very often and when i use it i have two p hooks um so uh, i have a g plus and i think that this will be a decent size for the bag it's going to be a smaller bag than what bag a day made but um that's okay i can um adjust it as needed um and that's cool so i'm just frogging now this yarn has a bit of fuzz to it so uh rainbow by ice yarn is 100 percent premium premium acrylic 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 Oh yeah, I have fudged my impression because I left out a stitch and I wasn't redoing it. <laughs> okay, so it's like, I, let me just try to show you guys this frogging situation. It's like the most beautiful pile of frog mess yarn barf ever like look how pretty that is it's such like it's like a sunset it's so pretty um so frog in this and um it's a little bit 
so the DK is a little bit uh, fuzzy, so I was really worried that it wouldn't frog easily, but it actually frogs pretty easily. Um, I'm very impressed uh, and um, maybe it's because the stitches are so loose. I like G hooks, so I had to go four millimeter for my. I tend to go four millimeter for any. Yeah, so they had G hooks, which I typically use for my amigurumi, um, but they were out of G hooks. They were out of J hooks. They were out of K hooks, and those are my three main hooks that I use. So um, they had this G plus, which is four point five millimeters. Um, it's literally called a G plus and, uh, it's 4.5. I've never seen a G plus. I've never seen a pattern that required a G plus. Um, so I'm really like, what do I use this thing for? Um, this will actually be the first time I'm using it. So I, but I figure it's a nice size for this weight of yarn and, um, will give me those nice tight stitches, um, or tighter stitches to be able to really see that stitch definition. Um, I was really disappointed, but I kind of predicted that I would have a problem by using the J-hook. Uh, it felt it together a little bit here. Let me see if I can snap that with my fingernails. There we go. Okay, now we're getting to the part where it's like, oh, you said it was easy to frog, but now it's not easy. Um, so, um, this bag is very easy to make. Um, it's great for practicing your basic stitches. So obviously it has a chain, it has single crochet, it has double crochet, and it has triple crochet. So it's great if you're new to crochet um, to, uh, to do this uh, pattern that Bag A Day has put up. It's very beginner friendly. Um, she is... Honestly, I've done some of her more like intermediate patterns and I'm not a great crocheter by any means, but she is so great at, um, at explaining things and being so thorough and she is so clear in her tutorials that it really, really makes um, crochet a lot easier. So I'm a big fan tend to go to smaller, I have a lot of hooks now, all kinds of lace weight, and to, I think, a P-hook. Yeah, I go up to a P-hook. I don't do a lot of small projects, um, mostly because uh, of fear. <laughs> um, I feel like, you know, like, I would love to do, like, a lacy collar, um, and, um, stuff like that but i just like i have this fear of lace i don't know what that's about um i saw this uh i didn't click on the article but i saw this article where someone this lady wanted to make a fence but she wanted to make the in like so it was like a wooden frame and she wanted to make uh lace a lace fence. So she made these giant uh, knitting hooks and um, and uh, knit lace fences. It was so cool. Um, I mean, and they were giant. Like, they were probably um, like the width of like of this. Like, that's crazy. Two knitting needles. I said knitting hooks earlier. You can tell that I'm a crocheter. Um, <laughs> um, and I just don't knit anymore. I saw that. It was amazing. It was so beautiful. I was like, oh my gosh, that is so cool. <laughs> like, goals. <laughs> but if someone ripped through that, I would lose my shit. I would be like, I worked so hard on this, and you ripped through it, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> um, I don't condone violence, but if someone, if I did that much work, I might. <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, so, um, God, this is the most beautiful frogging ever. Um, I'm so excited. I'm excited to do this bag because as soon as she posted it, I was like, yes, this is what I'm here for. Um, she, I mean, I think that for, like, for me, when I think about what I'll wear, what I'll use, um, what I want around my house, a lot of bag -of days patterns, I don't, um, I don't use because a lot of them are, like, wraps and things that, like, a lot of people like. But um, I, I would very like <laughs> I would be very likely to do damage. So, uh, yes. <laughs> um, so uh, you know, she makes a lot of wraps. She makes a lot of baby blankets. Um, I don't have uh, a lot of babies in my life anymore. Um, uh, that sounded bad. Uh, you know, I we had a friend when we lived in Charlotte who had just had a baby. So I made her um, houndstooth uh, baby suspender uh, overalls. Um, and it was so cute. I made it out of white and dark green and it was so cute. Um, although I think one leg was bigger than the other. Oopsies. Um, and, uh, you know, I... Um, you know, I've made some baby blankets and stuff like that, but I just don't like, I just don't really like making blankets. To me, I want to like a shorter project that I can get through, that I can get on to the next one. Cause I'm always like looking to the future. I'm very um, ADHD and <laughs> you know, I have, I have mild ADHD, but, um, but I, uh, I just like, I can't do these really big long projects. So, um, so a lot of her projects I don't do simply for the fact that like, I don't have a lot of use for them and I'm not trying to sell wraps um, and stuff like that. So I just don't really use them. But when I saw this bag, I said, that is a bag that I will actually use. Um, and not only that, I think it'll be easy enough to make that if I do want to sell bags, um, I can go ahead and sell them. Um, so I am really excited to make my first bag. Um, babies are sweet. It's fun to make things for them for heirloom stuff, but they outgrow so fast. I want to focus on things I want to make. Exactly. You know, it's just like, it's fun to make things for babies. Um. Yes, the knot bag looks amazing. Yeah, I'm so excited to um, to do that. Making sure I don't undo my chain. Okay. So hopefully this doesn't mess up my count. If it does, well, we'll just do it again. <laughs> okay, so I'm threading in, I'm keeping the chain, which was made with a J hook. So it's gonna scrunch up quite a bit. It's not gonna be this long, but that's okay. The, I could have had a loose chain and I'm telling myself this so I don't have to rechain. Um, allows me to create and to learn exactly and you know I find it such a, a meditative um, relaxing process um, I I really really am so happy that I found crochet um, it's made a big difference in my life and um, it's been very therapeutic for me um, so we're just gonna do single crochets all the way across it's weird going from a clover to a furls <laughs> it's just different i love furls but it's different <laughs> and it's much tinier
but once you get used to it, it's so comfortable in the hand. I was, um, so I was making one of my, my first cat sweater and I was using a K hook and I was using, I started by using the Clover K hook and something about the plastic of the um, hook itself and the yarn I was using was making this awful, awful like skin curdling, uh, I guess is the word, um, uh, squeaky noise, just like over and over and over. It was like nails on a chalkboard. And I was like, I can't do this. So I was like, do I have another K hook that I can use? And I actually do have a, um, I have one for all that I won last year. It's a J. I'm using my daughter's beast of a blanket. Oh, I, 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 I just ordered my, my J hook and I'm so excited. But yeah, blankets are um, hard. <laughs> I like, I have a existential crisis every time I make a blanket when I'm like, why did I do this to myself? I tend to make blankets with chunky yarn. Um, not just chunky, but like size seven <laughs> yarn, like to get it over with. Uh, because I can't imagine using like a size four yarn. Um, but uh, although I'm much more comfortable with the size and the hook size. Um, and uh, something about me just like, I, I want to like granny squares more than I do. I feel like as a crocheter, it's a rite of passage to like granny squares. Um, I was going to make this blanket with, um, with granny squares that were all neon colors. And it was going to do all of the bordering and everything in black. Um, so I thought that that would be cool, like a day glow type, um, type project. But I just like got tired of making granny squares and like, they're all kind of different sizes. So you need to block them and like blocking is like, really annoying. Just the idea of blocking is really annoying. Tend to bore me to tears while I'm making it for her because she got married. It's a four way in king size. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That is incredible. You deserve a, a patience award for your work. Um, <laughs> because that is incredible. Not to be morbid or macabre, but I don't think I would be on this earth anymore if I had to make that. I'm just saying. This um this hook is is great. It slides really nicely. Um, it makes like a slight squeaky noise, but I it's not like it's more of a squeaky feel if you know what I mean. Like the uh. I believe this is, uh, it's resin. Um, so the resin of the hook and the slide of this particular yarn kind of has this like squeaky feel, which I don't love, but it's not driving me crazy. Like the K hook situation was, oh yeah, I didn't finish my story. Like I said, mild ADHD. Um, so I, um, I luckily have a K hook by Furls and was able to switch to that. And oh my goodness, it made such a big difference. It was just like life saving. I was like, thank you. I'm so glad I have this hook. And it's um, it's a, uh, a Virgo, so it's green. I found it, you know, because. I tried to buy furls on their website and they were out of a lot of things. And I finally, I was on Amazon and I looked up furls hooks and I found this one K hook that was beautiful and um, 84 squares left out of 225 assembled border. I hate black yarn. I hate squeaky hooks. Okay. Um, what I was going to, so I was going to make some, I'm a Virgo. Oh, yay. Oh, I love that. That's great to know about you. 
very um sensible very sensible um you know um i you know i've always been uh surprised by the virgos in my life because virgos are you know and this is like sun sign so if you're into astrology um like i uh, tend to be um you know there's like the sun sign the moon sign your ascendant your you know mars your whatever so um but if you just look at sun signs i find that virgos tend to be you know they're very meticulous they're very organized they're very um they're very um just like you they're they're just so particular about things but they're unassuming um which i love i think that people underestimate the um the passion and the the fire of a virgo because the virgo is so grounded a virgo is like on the ground just like looking straight ahead what do i got to do pragmatic all of that stuff but um but virgos can, can like really let loose and just have like this wild time and you're like what happened <laughs> to this sensible person <laughs> that i'm so used to um so it's really fun uh to see a virgo let loose so i i've i've grown i didn't understand them when i was younger very close to the cusp of libra organized chaos but yes very pragmatic um yeah i'm i'm actually a cusp baby myself i am a cusp of libra and scorpio so i am um bipolar <laughs> um pretty much uh it pretty much is like the definition of bipolar um yeah being on the cusp with libra um definitely leads to a lot of um you know libra has its share of chaos and i think that often gets overlooked uh, you know because libras are known for being pretty and they just kind of like things just fall into their laps and you know whatever but like you know and they're all about balance and justice and peace and all that um but libras you know there tends to be this like just like air of chaos around them and it's always like they're on the precipice of chaos <laughs> i feel like all the time i don't know maybe that's just my version of libra um but uh i don't know it's being a cusp makes you definitely makes a difference um i found because i am technically uh libra but if i was born like two hours later i would be a scorpio and um i'm at like 29 degrees libra so um i'm very much in the mix with both oh why did i do a double crochet getting ahead of myself One of my sisters is Libra. She's actually a bit of a control freak, but she's close to the Libra Scorpio cusp. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, that she probably has some Virgo in her, um, <laughs> honestly, or maybe some Taurus, um, in my experience. I, so I don't know if you've looked at it. Oh, I did another double crochet. <laughs> um i don't know if you've looked at these before but if you're into astrology um you did a double crochet because i'm gonna distract me i just well so i when i was doing um this cat sweater this is all double crochet so i get so used to doing one stitch that like oh i can't get out of it um and this is like switching stitches all the time 
because you're doing a single then a triple then a single then a triple then a single and triple next row you're doing a double all the way across and you're like wow um so no getting comfortable with this pattern come here you little baby um but if you're into astrology um and you want to find out more about your um your chart there is a thing called um your birth chart um you can just google there's a lot of free websites um my favorite is astrolabe um and i've been using them for years and i um believe that uh you know there's more than just the sun sign um that you know helps um not necessarily define us but helps kind of explain some things so and some things will be contradictory and you kind of have to take that with i wouldn't say take it with a grain of salt kind of i don't know um i would just say um you just have to consider that uh we all have contradictions within us. We can be both really level-headed and really hot-headed. You know, like we can we can be both things, but we can just let one show. You know, like a lot of like, you know, some of these things are what people see when they look at us. And some of them are what's inside that we're dealing with. So there can be contradictions between the two. And I think that that's something that sometimes when people look at birth charts, they're like, well, this contradicts that. Um, but really, both can be true. Or it can be completely off. I mean, I read birth charts that like didn't fit people at all. And I was like, something's wrong. <laughs> but um, all you need for that is your, um, your place of birth and your time of birth. Um, and obviously your date of birth. Um, if you don't have the time, it's not a huge deal. But it, if you're a cusp, it, it might make a big deal on what your sun sign is um, and what your ascendant is. Um, so just something worth trying out if you're into that. Um, I think it's very interesting. Um, I always like knowing as much as I can and then making my decisions from there, you know, you can choose to believe whatever you want to believe. Well, the moon affects tides, ebbs and flows. If the moon affects us, I have a baby, possible star line is just like this. I don't know for sure, but open mind is vital for life. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, why not? I mean, what does it hurt? You know, that's, that's my, that's kind of my motto is like, what does it hurt to like, have this opinion or, um, you know, whatever. Um, and if it doesn't, then like, or not necessarily have this opinion. Oh, I did another double crochet. Ah. <laughs> um, you know, if it doesn't um, hurt anything, then why not look it up? Check it out. See if it fits. If it doesn't fit, toss it away. If it fits, my explain thing. Hi, Jenny. Oh, it's great to see you. How are you? Oh, I miss you so much. I've been wondering how you've been. I can be in your live. Yes, you can. Welcome in. Happy to have you here. I am crocheting a Japanese knot bag. Um, oh, you're great. Oh, I love that. Oh, so happy to see you. I'm happy to see you too, and I'm happy you're doing well. 
Oh, that makes me so happy. Um, we were just talking about astrology. But I think that I wrung that towel out pretty well. <laughs> I am making a Japanese knot bag that was um, made by Bag a Day. Uh, she made this beautiful bag. Um, so I am working on that. I'm working with a rainbow. Um, it's so beautiful. And um, it's literally, the yarn is literally called rainbow. Uh, the, um, this is from Ice Yarn. The color number is 62912. And, oh, that's so sweet. Thank you very much. I was having a really hard time um, with my depression and I was unable to really get out of bed or do anything. Um, so I didn't do live for a long time. And uh, I just wanted to um, take some time to heal and feel better. And now I feel a lot better. So I'm really happy that I can be live and hang out with you guys and, um, you know, crochet and make some beautiful things or some semi-beautiful things. <laughs> I think they're beautiful, but that's objective. I say objective, I meant subjective. Oh, thank you. So right now I'm doing a single crochet across the entire 82 stitches. Um, this yarn transitions um, in colors, it's a rainbow. Um, what time is it there? It is 12.47 p.m. So right around lunchtime. The hook, it's a colorful, yeah, it's rainbow. Um, it's purple on the end, yeah. This is from a company called Furls, um, which I believe they're based out of the U.S. Um, and they released a uh, gay pride um hook set, uh, and they actually released another one uh within the last week that is this um type of hook but it is all glitter 10 17 uh p.m in night at in india oh that's wow yeah i always forget about how significant the time difference is but i'm so glad you could join us Almost done with my chain, which makes me happy because I hate breaking off the chain. I don't. Does anyone else like? Is that is that annoying to anyone else to like work off the chain? Because I'm just like, oh, my stitches are so hard to see. Everything's just so like, man. I know, and you're alive. <laughs> well, I'm happy that you're happy, and I'm happy you're here. I'm, I have been thinking about you, and I was like, oh, I hope Jenny's doing well, and hopefully I'll get to see her soon. Um, so I'm really happy that you were able to join in my live. I know this is a 
more unusual time for me to do my live. So, um, so I really appreciate you joining. And I'm glad that the timing works out for you. Yes, it's so annoying to work on chains. Okay, thank you. Oh, I was like, I feel like I'm crazy, but like, oh, it's so annoying. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to chain one and turn my work. I defrog like this whole thing. If the yarn is too dark or I'm using the back bump for Tunisian crochet, it's very irritating to work on the into the chain. Oh yeah, when you gotta go into the back bump. But I do love the way it looks when you work into the back bump. But uh, because I crocheted this with a larger hook, finding the back bump is like damn near impossible. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna turn my work, or attempt to turn my work. And I'm going to do, I did my chain. I'm going to work a single crochet into the first hook, first loop, sorry. And then I'm going to work triple into the next. You make me cry as you say you think about me. Oh, oh, I don't, I don't want you to cry. <laughs> No, I just like, you know, I, you know, I have a handful of people that have been so supportive and lovely, lovely, lovely to me. And I really want to make sure that they are doing well and happy and I get to see them. Um, so, you know, of course you're important to me. You are all important to me. Nixie, you're really important to me. Um, I don't want to like name off names because I'll forget someone and then I'll feel bad. But like, you guys are all important to me. Um, and uh, I just, I'm really thankful that you guys join me and um, just talk to me. You know, crocheting can be lonely if you, uh, if you let it be. And I am really fortunate to have so many good friends on the internet um, from all over the world who I can crochet with and talk to. And, um, you know, I'm lucky. I don't take that for granted. I take a lot of things for granted, but not that. I get your notification and you look forward to seeing you visit. The time difference. Well, yes, but I'll try to be more consistent. Um, I'm trying to figure out a schedule for me to um, have regular. Oh, which loop is it? Is it not this loop? No. Um, there we go. Um, I'm trying to figure out a schedule. Uh, and, uh, then I can be a little bit more predictable with when I go live. So, um, one of the things about, uh, my quote unquote schedule is that I don't really have one. Um, I basically schedule my, uh, my, um, lives around doctor's appointments and when I feel good enough to, um, go live. Um, which, uh, I'm trying to go live a lot in the month of June, um, just because I want to, um, show, you know, wave my pride flag proudly and openly. And, um, I, uh, um, yeah, I just want to be able to um, go live a lot this month. So I can't say what it'll be like in um, 
in July or going forward. But I can say that this month I am trying to do a lot more lives. So I'll be going live at least every other day, if not every day. I think that depending on how this bag goes, I might do multiple lives today. I don't know. Um, just because this is a slightly bigger project than I've been um, working on lately. So I figure it'll take longer and I'll need a couple lives to complete it. Um, and I just like wanna hang out with you guys. Um, it's just, it's fun for me. Um, we are so close to <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not as close as I would like to be, but, um, that's okay. You know, I've, this time away from YouTube has really made me question why I need the subs and, and, and all of that, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, um, it's nice to have more friends. I like that. I like that fact. Um, but I'm not trying to like meet any numbers or meet any goals anymore. Um, oh God. Oh, we got a tangle. There we go. Okay. Tangle's gone. So, um, so I don't know. I just feel like now I'm just trying to make stuff and um if people like it that's cool if people don't that's cool too um i'm fine with anything you know and i feel like that's made me a lot more relaxed because it's not a popularity contest and i'm not gonna win if it is um so just have fun and um make friends and crochet that's all i'm looking to do If I'm awake, I'll likely be clicking on your link, but I have very erratic sleep patterns, so you never know when I'll be awake. I understand that a thousand percent. Um, my sleep is all over the place. It was a lot worse, but it's been getting better, but I still take naps during the day. Um, but yeah, my, my upload, um, my upload schedule really revolves around how I'm feeling and like I said, and um, also just how, um, you know, I don't really have a lot of things to do. Uh, so I could like stream all the time if I really wanted to, but I, you guys would probably get sick of me. Um, I probably run out of things to say, uh, you know, I just, uh, you know, part of this gig, I guess, is talking to yourself. <laughs> and like, sometimes I don't have anything to say to myself, <laughs> at least nothing nice that I want to put on the internet. Um, so I, um, yeah. Oh, God. Oh, there we go. Okay. I love the way um, that uh, that for when you're doing like a double or triple crochet that the um, furls hook rolls. It just is so nice. It's just like a really nice feeling. It's so ergonomic. Just a couple of weeks I finished my 12th grade e grade examination. Oh my gosh, that's great. Yay. You're doing so well. How is your crocheting going, Jenny? I know you um, were doing some amigurumi uh, last time I talked to you. Um, is that still what you're focusing on? Also, Jenny, what's your blanket look like that you're working on? Um,
yeah, this stitch definition is a lot better. See the little bumpies? Yes. I'm kind of working on my own amigurumi patterns, but that doesn't go well. But I'm trying to, going to keep trying. Good for you. You know, amigurumi is hard. Um, it's it's a very challenging. I tried to make my own amigurumi patterns before. It is very difficult. So keep trying. You're gonna you're gonna do great. Um, and I know that whatever you make will be wonderful and creative and very fun. Of course, of course, of course, you'll always find support here. I'm really missing four-way yarn right now. Really missing Jenny, I'm going to make a cat sweater out of this yarn. Isn't that cute? It's got all the colors of the rainbow. How can I call you Ian or Pivy? You can call me either whatever, whatever you um, want to call me. <laughs> um, you know, Ian or Pivy, uh, it, they both work. Um, Pivy is a nickname I've had for like 10 plus years um, from my friends. And so I I don't mind it at all. Um, but Ian is my, my name. So whatever you want to call me. Pivy is my internet name. <laughs> I'm going to turn my camera off real quick because my wife doesn't want to be on camera. But um, I'll be right back and I'll be here. Don't worry. <laughs> Okay, I'm back.
I am also applying for disability. Um, I haven't received my first rejection yet. Um, so we'll see how that goes. And, uh, you know, I know that um, here in the U.S., uh, they tend to reject your um, disability uh, right off the bat. And um, then they require you to go to a hearing um, for uh, to get your disability. Um, and so I haven't even reached the first stage of um, disability uh, denial. Which sucks. I don't know. I don't know if I lived. I don't know how I survived it. I'm still here and there. Wonderful things in my life. Oh, Nixie, you're just like so positive. It's okay. No, I'm very happy that you were able to be here, Jenny, and it was great to see you and um, talk to you, and I'm so glad you're doing well. I'm so glad you um, you finished your uh, 12th grade uh, assessment, and I can't wait to see you again. Sleep well. Yeah, thank you, Nixie. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I, you know, they seem to think that I have a, a good case. Um, I've been working with lawyers. Um, and uh, they, yeah, they th seem to think I have a good case. Uh, for this, so that's good, because um, they're, you know, kind of the experts, whereas I'm just trying to figure out what the, what's going on. Um, I received a notice from the Social Security Administration that they received my um, thing, but I haven't received anything else from them, so I don't know. I technically have one of the disabilities that is on the list of like you can get disability but i don't know what else they're gonna want they they think i'm gonna have to go to a hearing um which i'm not particularly excited about but whatever the process is i'll do it um just because that's what I have to do. Nervous about it, but I can't be nervous about something that's kind of so far off right now. Don't have the time. lawyers for help when it comes to mental disability. It takes a lawyer. I got lucky, I guess, because I wound up in a wheelchair for two years and that got me on fast, but mine's physical. Yeah, I feel like there's a big um, difference between physical and mental, and I understand why, um, because one, it's easier to prove that you can't work, um, but I don't, um, 
I don't know. I just like, I really have like this like deep fear of going back to work and just like plummeting to my doom again. And um, you know, that seems like it's just a matter of time so I feel like going back to work for me is kind of like putting me on this like schedule of or this this ticking time bomb of, of when I'm gonna lose my shit. Um, and don't particularly like that. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. And you know, I think the lawyers will help. Um, and you know, I asked how they get paid and. They told me that they take like a certain percentage up to like six thousand dollars of back pay and um so they are like bound by law to like not take more than that um which is good i guess so they can't just like rip me off for like 20 percent of everything or whatever you lost your job because your father and she gets you help also yeah i think so but you know it's hard because i have a degree i have um you know i have work experience i worked at a very technical job and so i think that it's just hard but i've been thinking about getting a part-time job um something that would work with disability um because i know it's a limited amount of money that you can make a month so um so i just like want to contribute a little bit to the household and not be such like a dead weight. I feel like a dead weight, you know, especially with like not getting disability yet. It's just like, feel like I'm just like a leech. Oh, how did this get so sad? I'm making a sad video. Okay, so this is it so far. You can see the bumpy bumpies. Uh, this stitch definition is so much better. Uh, we'll see what happens once I do the next row, which is, um, ask what field I was in. Uh, so I, um, was, uh, actuary. Um, it's basically a, um, kind of like a cross between a mathematician and a data analyst. And um, I was also a consultant. Um, so, uh, so I have people skills, I have technical skills, I have high intelligence, that's what they tell me, at least. Um, and, uh, you know, just a fucked up brain. <laughs> So, yes, we can talk about yarn. I'm really excited to use this mandala quick and thick. I hope it's enough yarn. I'm hoping so much it's enough yarn because I've made two cat sweaters already. If I make another one and it doesn't fit, I'm quitting YouTube. <laughs> I'm quitting everything. Um, and, um, it was really interesting. It was a really cool job and I really enjoyed it. And, um, it was really hard to not be able to do, but it's very fast paced. It's very stressful. Um, the hours you work are really intense. So it really just pushed me over the edge. So I could see them trying to put me in a job. It's like low stress, but 
if it's low stress, that doesn't mean that my mind isn't going to mess up. Um, it might just take longer. I don't know. Um, you know, they'll do whatever they can to make, to not pay. So we'll see. Love the squirrels, I want them all, but I don't need them all because I don't have enough money. <laughs> my favorite job was working in a library. One of my most interesting jobs was working in a sport engineer. That's cool. Permitting issues. Oh, very cool. I would love to work in a library. I think I might even like just try to volunteer at a library um, because I just think it would be nice. Um, just like being around books all day and, um, you know, that kind of thing. I would love that. Libraries are out. I would set up a little library when I Oh, that would be so cool. If you do, you gotta tell me about it. I'll come visit. Yarn bombing on the box. Oh, that would be so cool. Okay, we're almost at the end of this row and I might, once I'm done, I might go for a little bit and um, get some more coffee because I am a two cup kind of guy and uh, I need caffeine. <laughs> um, also, I probably need to like do something with my hair because it's just freaking all over the place like what is what is this thing what is that um <laughs> it made it worse um ugh, who knows uh so i feel like i look like a really um weird gilderoy lockhart <laughs> um like a weasley gilderoy lockhart uh so i um want to thank you very much for watching um you know this is something that um pride is something that i'm very passionate about um i read i read something somewhere i shared it on my facebook because every time i see it um no not lockhart <laughs> um i uh i i'll i'll part with this and it's a little uh morbid but i think it is true and i think that um it's something that we need to remember when we talk about pride because we're talking about rainbows and yarn and everything fun and everything is great and, you know oh all these colored flags and, and stuff like that and what we need to realize is that pride is important 
And the, the quote, uh, I'll try to do it as best as I can, is pride is important because somewhere out there, someone believes it's better to be dead than to be themselves. And um, every time I see that, it hurts my heart. Um, and it hurts my heart because I know that it's true. And so when we think about pride, not only do we think about the fun and the joy and the celebrations of being ourselves, being our authentic selves, but we have to think about um, the people who can't be out, the people who have to hide themselves, the people that are struggling with their identity and um, their mental health and um, be there to support them as well. So thank you so much. I, I hate to end on a sour note. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for helping me um, spread awareness about Pride Month because it's important and we need to talk about it. And, um, you know, I really appreciate it. So thank you guys so much. I love you so much. 